Hi, this is Eva for Midnight Mandela. Welcome, everybody. Um, actually, for Once Upon a Timeline also. I'm running a little late today. Sorry, kind of as usual. I actually only got home like 20 minutes before the show, so I was kind of scrambling to get everything set up. Okay, so you guys are talking about the Sphinx. I'm, I kind of took an extra minute to look at it. Um, for the the white wet why am I having trouble saying that the white redwoods uh, if talking about the albino trees we have covered that one um, a while ago maybe like a year um, yeah those are really weird so they also are making some kind of weird story that the albino trees pull more poisons out of the soil soil and maybe it's like uh, nature's way of cleaning the soil or something and then they're saying the other neighboring trees support them for that reason. All kind of weird stuff. Okay. Reading the rest of the stuff. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, if we're still talking about the Sphinx, last I checked there was two of those ships they dug up. Um, I don't remember any ships in my old timeline. JW's in, welcome. Going to work in a few hours. Welcome everybody, I, I guess I was just too out of it to say uh, hi to everybody, but hello. Okay, so I'm looking at the Sphinx. One thing weird about the Sphinx, every time I just type in the Sphinx, and I get um, really different looking batches of photos from different angles every few months. It's like the old photos are gone and you only see certain angles. Now, one angle I do see often is this one straight through the middle of the pause. Uh, but what I don't remember seeing from that angle is uh, this on the left side. I think there's that road now or something on the side. I have covered that before. So people are like, what's in front of the Sphinx? Okay, in the past I've covered that I didn't remember all these brickworks in front of the Sphinx. Um, now I'm looking to, is there, they have like a chair there? It looks like they've got a chair. And like, what's this stuff? I don't know if that's permanent, but anyway, you can really see the bricks. I mean, I'm guessing that's temporary, but this looks like brickwork in here uh, raised, which is the first time I'm seeing that. Interesting. And there's looks like there's some kind of pedestal thing here. Uh, I don't know if that's permanent. Okay, let's see what else we got. Okay, so I'm assuming you're talking about all this stuff in the front. Interestingly, I don't remember ever seeing that. Now, I do remember that it had raised walls, but not right in front of the Sphinx. It was along the back and the sides. Uh, I think we call it with the, the temple enclosure or something. Um, they, I, the story was they'd kind of mined some of the materials and stacked them up along the side, but down the front was not stacked crappy whatever the heck that is I, I don't remember that at all oh let's see look i can seeing it again here so yeah this thing whoop, what happened does not allow hot linking okay then i'm just kind of looking at a few photos uh to see if i see anything else weird So again, um, here, I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. So every other time I've ever looked for the Sphinx, uh, I did not see stacks of bricks right in front of it like that. I don't know what's going on over here either. Um, my face is probably blocking it. Let me move it. Uh, oops, no. So I'm looking at this. What What is this? I do not know. Is there's like a hole in here. Now I'm going to kind of assume that this was during some repair work, but still, this looks like old, old stuff here. So, um, and again, I'll say I don't remember them, the Sphinx being anywhere near the Great Pyramids originally. And that's been there for a while, though. 
All right, the thumbnail. I'll get to it uh, pretty soon. A new building. Yeah, a new old building. It's been the longest month. You know, you're right. This has, I won't say it is, this month has been going as slow as my original months did. But it has gone a little slower um, than <laughs> a lot of months. It's, it's like it slowed down a little. I haven't gotten my whole time back. But it has improved, I'd say. Reading, reading well. Wait, but wait. Oh, so you don't remember the sunken pit. That's interesting. Yeah, for me, it was there, but not in the front. It was sunk, sunk a little. Now, I've, I've added, there's been a lot of stuff added, like a road and some kind of, I don't know, other stuff. It's getting all, like, everything's all squished together now. Egypt and its wonders don't look familiar at all to me these days. Yeah, you know, there's a whole bunch of new stuff. There's, um... You know, like a Pe Petra, after Petra kind of showed up, stuff like Petra is just multiplying all over the place. So there's a whole bunch of Petra-like stuff all through Egypt now and just like everywhere. Let's see what we got else. Okay, I'm going to quick, a quick... See, all these angles just look different now with the, the pyramid right behind. Um, I think these pyramids might have, there might have been some more shifting around. Because it looks like they've gotten even closer or something. Yeah, whoever said that it looks a little longer, I, I think I agree with you. The Sphinx does look a little long to me. It always had the long paws, but it seems like the body has stretched out some. Now that you mention it, I mean, it was always long, but... Secret key behind the Sphinx's ear. Life will change irrevocably when the Sphinx is what opened. So that wasn't there originally for me. A couple years old Mandela. There's the tail. Tail keeps getting bigger. I mean, it's pretty much all just repairs now. I mean, it's getting to the point where it could be anything under there. So for me, it was a uh, rock, and the rock was weathered, but it was never weathered this bad. And it wasn't all covered with bricks and didn't have a tail, but that's all old stuff. Okay, here's another view of that um, stuff in the front. Look, there's, looks like there's even a little gate there. Hmm. So just chime in if you see anything else. I kind of feel like this this area might be a little larger. This this little, um, I've said before, I don't remember that originally, but it looks like it's kind of grown like this upper lip area. So I remember that being like one kind of thing. Now it's two kinds of materials. There's this smoother bottom and then this brick-like uh, brick -like thing. And I don't remember it being a two-parter like that. I'm not sure I remembered this second one down here either. Um, and then having the pyramid right there, just it looks a little off. So all these images are now from different angles than the last time I looked. Ooh, I don't think I've ever seen the back. <laughs> that looks terrible. <laughs> I think that's the back of the head. It looks terrible. Uh, compared to what it used to be, it's just a travesty.
What does the Balochistian Sphinx? Oh, I think that might be a rock that looks like the Sphinx. Okay. I don't know. So if you guys have anything else to add, now is the time to chime in. There are several pictures of this pyramids where you can actually see the city buildings in the background. Uh, interesting. I'll just pop these in. Yeah, that would probably be the first time. They're finally allowing it to show in the images. Hmm? Images. All right, so I just typed in the Great Pyramids. So now last I checked, this thing was like far away in front of this pyramid and it just looked like it was clamped on. But I keep wondering if this thing is, because of the weird angles that it always shows this on, if it eventually, it will become part of the pyramid. Because the pictures always make it look like it is. I, have, I haven't looked at that. I haven't checked that lately, though. Okay, what do we got here? Okay, yeah, see, now you can see some of the buildings and the pyramid in the background. They're still not um, coughing up a lot of the built-up stuff, though. They're just start. Look, it's starting off small. Some cars, one little house. All right, here's that one again. See, it really does look like it's on there, doesn't it? But it's not supposed to be. This structure is not supposed to be. It looks like it's pretty close now, though. I just keep wondering if this is going to combine and become part. Okay, here's more um, image of that stuff in the front. Yeah, look, there's gates. People walking. So I guess it's just all gated in now. Crappy gates, but it's gates. And this thing, huh, weird. Yeah, um, hmm. So yeah, I agree, that's, that's a new one. Okay, so, uh, close that one down. Okay, so yes, some of you guessed right. The thumbnail is the Statue of Liberty. So it was, uh, Jay Emblin said, they thought that maybe the statue had gotten um, a little shorter or the pedestal had gotten a little taller. I don't see a huge change, but we'll just take a peek at that height one. This is the, wait, no, that one's the warped one. This one is the one we always look at. So it does look to me like the pedestal is probably taller than the statue now, or it's really close. I feel like maybe this one, uh, base torch, has dropped down a little. Like maybe that part of the base has gotten a little longer. But I don't see a huge change from last time I looked. It was um, about 300 base, bottom to top was about 150. I just think that the, the pin down here was a little higher for this 150. And I do remember it, this pin here being at the bottom of the statue for a while, like on the green part. 
it really doesn't make sense to pin it on at the feet when the green part is part of the statue. Uh, it's not part of the pedestal, so I don't know. Um, but anyway, this stuff all shifts around. At some point, they started adding thickness of the waist. That wasn't originally on this image. Uh, yeah, it got thicker. So uh, what happened, though, is when I was looking at this, so I just was like, okay, let's just look around. Actually, let's go to this one. So I looked at some of the known features, the back of the hair. I looked at the feet. And then I looked at the shackles, because I don't remember shackles in my original timeline. Let's see if this one will do it. Okay, ooh, this one's a perfect image. Okay, so... The first thing I saw was this image, and um, not only is this, oh, so I'm thinking this is like the, the ankle shackle part with the chain. This is a little bigger than I remember. It's not placed how I remember, and then I'm like, where's the other one? So I remember there being two of the leg braces present, and I didn't see the other one. So this one got bigger. And that one uh, is gone. And I actually looked and looked, and it's, it's gone, gone. So now this chain just kind of disappears underneath the robes near the feet. So then that foot is still shackled, basically. And then here, there's a little break in the chain, but it's basically still stuck to these nail head things. Now, I said before I don't remember these nail head things. Uh, but now, um, yeah, it's stuck to these nail head things. And so that foot is basically shackled now because it disappears under the robe. And that one's still attached, although it could pop off. Um, now this one's broken where the foot has moved, but that one is still there. So that was the first change. I'm like, okay, we're missing a shackle or a leg brace. So then they're referring to the chains as the shackles in some places. So then this, this image showed up. And what shocked me is that this image is be call, being called an axe head in some places. So this here is supposed to be this. I can't quite see how this is this, frankly. That, that, these look like it you know, tapers down. Um, it doesn't look like it suddenly changes. Uh, maybe it could have, but I don't see how I would see this and then um, not see more of it, like, continuing around so I, i'm kind of having trouble how i get they get this out of this so you can see the the foot back here it's the right foot so this is this um but so some places i don't know if it's going to turn into an axe head uh, but there's a bunch of places calling this an axe head and so they're like uh, uh the shackles and the axe head uh, symbolize uh, release from oppression and, and stuff. And so it was like in the, some of the images were like in the Library of Congress. Um, there were lessons plans based on the axe head at the, at the feet of the Statue of Liberty. And I'm like, what the F? Okay, so I'm going to go dig out some of those now because it was like so stupid. Okay, so here you can see... This other one just disappears under the robes, and it is still attached, although it's not really clear in that one. And the other thing I noticed is um, there's very few images of the feet now. I actually made a specific effort to look for foot ones, and there's not, um, not only are there few of them, here we go. But most of them are low resolution, which wasn't the case last time. Okay, so you can see this is the one on the left foot. Um, it disappears in there, and it's just like a little bit attached still here. It's kind of broken, but it's kind of still attached. So that's a change for me. Now I'm going to dig up this axe head thing. Okay, so this is a government photo here. 
broken shackles, axe head, and right foot at base. And that's uh, the image that I pulled, and I just kind of snipped off the top during the repair. So I don't know, did some doofus, like, see that and just assume it was an axe head because they never heard of the shackles, which also were a Mandela for me? Um, or what? But anyway, it's, like, in Library of Congress. It's on government websites. Um, let's see, what did that say? Okay, I don't think this one mentions the axe head. But, I mean, is anybody wondering what the hell an axe head is doing down there? So did it all come from this one photo, broken shackles, axe head, and right-footed base, and then they all just saw that and jumped on it? Anyway, so I did find some other, um, there were some other explanations of it. Then they're just like, oh, it symbolizes this, and it symbolizes that, and... I'm like, is it even an axe head? Um, are we all that stupid in this timeline? I, I don't know, but it comes up kind of in a lot of places. So I, I don't know if we're gonna get that or people are just dumb. I've not seen that before though. Rivets is new for me. Yeah, those big nail rivet things. And there's all these like staple marks on uh, the Statue of Liberty too, but I, I covered that last time. The base wasn't, the base wasn't that high for me, but uh, it's been there a while for me. I've, I've talked about that one before. Yeah, there's more and more. It's like a layer cape. It keeps adding layers onto that base. And now, you know, there's like this whole story about the base costs more than the statue. Well, yeah, it's huge now. Book is gone. It's a tablet. Yes, it was a book. That's been there a while, though, that tablet. What happened to the second Miss Liberty? Um, they put that little one in somewhere. That's the only thing I know of. Anyone heard of Iceberg, the most famous orca? Nope. Yeah, the size of the statue and the pedestal seem to be approaching equality. I don't know what's up with that. I mean, when, since when does the pedestal actually... When you put up a statue, since when is the pedestal the bigger deal than the statue? So the story nine now is that that was a star fort. So there you have your Tartaria stuff. There was a star fort there, and they kind of modeled the, the pedestal after the star fort. That still doesn't explain why it's so freaking high, though. Yeah, no change originally for me, but they've been there a while. I thought in this timeline it came from somewhere else. Okay, so the original story I grew up with was it was a gift from France, uh, but now it was like a fundraiser from a dude in France, but a lot of the funds were raised in America too, and it was a private endeavor, and he originally was going to build it for the Panama Canal, and then he switched it to here. And uh, so it's not really a gift from France, but it still did come out of France. It's just not a gift from them really anymore. The shout. So there's one ankle bracelet left and then one not. 8.2 earthquake outside of Alaska. I know Alaska gets a lot of them. Iceberg is as famous as Megaloo, the most famous humpback wh whale. I don't know. Maybe I'm just out of it. I don't watch enough TV. So these guys are probably new, but I don't know anything about the most famous humpback whale either. Yeah, it's not really a gift from France. It's, it was a private endeavor by a French dude that was an artist. So he fundraised for it. So it's sort of kind of just, it sounds more like an artist just said, give me money and I'll make something for you. albinos oh oh albino whales and stuff okay yeah yeah those we didn't have those before so what is it it's an albino 
something. Everything's albino now. Like you said, even the trees are albino. Yeah, okay. I don't think I've seen an albino whale yet. This is like a new one. Megaloo. So I don't think I've heard of this Megaloo thing. It's almost getting to be like old hat, this albino stuff. I'm waiting for like the purple whales and stuff. We, we're getting like, I want to see the rainbow glow in the dark sparkle whales. I want to get the raz, razzle dazzle style whales. We almost have those though. Like those ships. I feel like I'm getting jaded now with the Mandela. Lindsay Hiccups is in. Oh, sorry, I haven't heard about the 600 children bodies washed up in Germany flood. That's sort of, all right, I'm just gonna check it out. I mean, is it just 600 kids and not adults? Okay, so they collected them all and laid them out at the gym. This has been kept secret from the public. Hmm. Okay, so I don't know. It sounds like this is rumor mill stuff. We don't really have confirmation. Ninety-five dead and one thousand three hundred missing as floods ravaged the Rhine. So I mean, it could be that they found six hundred, but. But I don't, I don't know, you know, the internet is the internet, so it's really hard to know if any of this is true or not. Operation Disclosure. I mean, I'm assuming there's no photos or anything. Nope. So it's just somebody's claim. It's just historically when there's a disaster, I don't recall any time where they were able to find, even find that many bodies. If there's, if there's a flood, you're, gonna, you're not gonna find oh, that many bodies so easily. And then they all happen to be children and they don't stack all the children like in one spot. So it just seems a little um, suspicious, I don't know. Sparkle glow whales eating bioluminescent jellyfish. You know, it, it probably isn't that far away. Uh, we The glow in the dark business. I actually should check it out. Do whales glow in the dark? Just for fun. The last I checked, there was sharks had been added to the glow creatures. Nope, does not look like we have the glow whales yet. I think we'll get them though, eventually. I did say we would get a shark and we got a shark. First it was the uh, black light glow sharks and I'm like, we're gonna get a regular glow shark and we have. Yeah. 
Yeah. So anyway, the children's story, uh, there's not there's not much support for it. I, I mean, I'm not saying it can't be true, but I mean, any good thing could be true, but I, I wouldn't, I need to see more data on that. Okay, so that's the Statue of Liberty. Okay, this one comes from Thomas Larson. Um, you, I am not sure on this one. I'm not enough of a Bible person, um, but do you guys remember um, Matthew 17 to missing from a lot of Bibles and then they just jump to another, the next one? Because I haven't heard of that. Now, maybe I just didn't know. And maybe it's something fishy for some people. But then when I read the reason for it, I don't understand what on the bleep they're talking about. Like, they, do they actually expect anybody to understand this? Okay, so I found this. So I don't know, just chime in, because I, I don't know, but it just, it's so weird. Why is Matthew 17, 21 missing or only a footnote in my Bible? Okay, so before we explain, they have to review the context in which Jesus made this statement. 10, 5, 8 tells us that Jesus had given his disciples power to cast out demons. But sometime later, in Matthew 17, we are told that they could not cast out a demon that was causing a man to be a lunatic. We are told in this passage that consequently Jesus cast out the demon and then explained to the disciples why they could not. There is an important lesson for us here. Some will say the disciples lacked faith, but Jesus explains that the faith they had was not enough to perform an instantaneous exorcism. They needed to fast and pray. So, you know, I do not remember that part where um they needed to fast and pray so i agree with that so apparently that's the part that some places are leaving out i actually really suspect that it's some places have slid in something fishy is i i feel like this is getting like shoehorned in okay so lord have mercy on my son he's a lunatic he falls into the fire and often in the water, blah, blah. Okay. And I brought him to your disciples and they could not cure him. And Jesus answered and said, and this is another part I don't remember. Jesus said, oh, unbelieving and perverted generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? I don't remember Jesus ever acting like a, parent that was sick of our crap i just don't remember anything about him saying how long shall i have to put up with you uh somebody comes in for help and he's like oh how long do i have to put up with you i don't remember ever any such statements and jesus rebuked him and the demon came out of him so he rebuked the person but then the demon came out and so even that sort of is not very nice because he uh, rebukes the person and then the demon comes out. He doesn't re rebuke the demon. And the boy was cured at once. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, because of the littleness of your faith. For truly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, so shall you shall say to this mountain, move from here to here and it shall move and nothing shall be impossible to you. Okay, I do remember that part. Um, I don't remember the word littleness, though, because of the littleness of your faith. But I do remember the mustard seed, you shall move the mountain from here to here, and it, it shall move. Uh, this was kind of a favorite one, because it basically said that if you had faith, you can perform miracles. You could move a mountain, you could do all this. It wasn't just Jesus, his disciples could do it, and he's saying it's because of faith. So. 
that's why when people perform miracles, um, I don't know why the religious organizations always say it's demons, um, because it, Jesus does say if you have faith, you can do all these things. And now with the Mandela, we see that the mountains are moving. So um, you didn't think that that was literal. It's probably literal. Okay, so then, um, all right, and nothing shall be impossible to you. But this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting, Matthew 17, 14, 21. So um, this is the part I don't remember, and I think it's been added. This kind does not go out except for by prayer and fasting. I don't remember that being stuck on it to any of the faith rules, by that you, okay, you can't have the faith without the prayer and fasting. Um, I don't remember anything like that. However, there's a problem with verse 21. It is not in the best manuscripts of the New Testament. I don't know what they mean, the best manuscripts of the New Testament. That is why the verse is placed in brackets. Okay, then, well, why isn't it in the best manuscripts of the New Testament? And I, I just, so they, they put it, why did you have, uh, Matthew, why do you even have that as a choice? You know, why, why do you skip over it? If either it should just not be there then? I don't know. They're just kind of weird. The passage is not included in more recent Bible versions. They go through some of them. The verse is not included in the newer Bibles because the older and better manuscripts of Matthew do not include it. The translators of the older Bibles were not always as careful in the selection of the manuscripts they used. Apparently, in the process of copying the manuscripts, someone at a much later date copied the verse from Gospel of Mark and added it into the Matthew account. Here is the Mark account. But the Mark account is different because it's, and he said to them, this cannot come out by anything but prayer. It didn't have the word fasting in it, so why did they assume it was copied from the Mark account? Um, I don't know. That just the whole thing is weird. So they're saying somebody was sloppy and and nicked this off of a whole different area and then stuck it in there, but added the fasting, uh, added the uh, prayer and fasting thing, the fasting part in with the prayer. The only difference between the quotes in Matthew and Mark is the word fasting. Okay, well, if he nicked it, then why is there fasting? I don't know. The whole thing, it does not make sense to me. And I have not heard of it. I feel like they're trying to shoehorn in this prayer and fasting business. So I don't know. For me, they're shoehorning it in. Maybe for you, they're shoehorning it out because the newer versions are supposedly don't have it now. changes around Britney Spears videos are getting ridiculous you know I sorry I just never followed her enough that I could help you with that one Not to head too far down the slippery slope, but now there is a writing uh, that the Almighty actually used demonic forces as a punishment. Related to your point about exasperation. Hmm. Yeah, I don't remember that either. Okay, so that one. That one's from Thomas Larson, and he was basically just asking what I remembered and I'm just not really sure on that one I don't remember ever reading about the prayer and fasting though personally I've never seen that so I guess in the current timeline you could say that maybe the version I looked at didn't have it I don't know okay so this next one comes from Shari Shari D found this and I don't know it's we're gonna have to be careful the words we type uh, just so that we don't get like some kind of um, adult um, to adult for the average person porn like uh, 
statements for this. <laughs> I probably should put it on the back, but... <laughs> okay, so good old Henry VIII. You know him as the guy who had the uh, giant turkey leg in the painting. Now doesn't. Now, I did cover that I felt like his uh, photo had... So he, first he had a turkey leg, then he was holding the glove instead. And then last time I said, look, there's a whole bunch of these portraits now, and they all look different than the last one I saw. And one of them had this giant cod piece, okay? So apparently these cod pieces are like a thing now. I didn't really pursue that. I just was like, I've never seen a uh, outfit like that with the cod piece. So apparently that's like becoming a thing. Now I have said before that I don't remember the stormtroopers having like that much of a bulgy area i didn't remember c-3po having that much of a bulging area then i didn't remember uh henry the eighth having a cod piece thing well now uh henry has brought it to the next level okay maybe i should type it in like this okay wait can't remember how I found it. Henry. All right, I think this is how we do it. All right, where did it go? And it's so ridiculous. It is so ridiculous. I'm sorry, but apparently <laughs> you can't make this up. It's supposed to be for real. This was his armor like king henry the eighth's armor was this okay now does that look safe to you i mean wouldn't the sword just like slam on that thing and get stuck wouldn't you want it to like bounce away and have you know a slick smooth surface that it skitters off <laughs> I mean, like you what if they hit with an axe or something and you can't tell me he needed that big a one. So, like, the whole thing is ridiculous. I mean, I guess you can kind of assume that he never would actually go into um, actual war. You know, you'd be in the back. And so maybe this was just some kind of for looks thing. But, I mean, like, come on, people. I mean, this is ridiculous. <laughs> it's like, who came up with this? Yeah, when Shari told me this, I was just, no. Let's see, is that the same one? I'm trying to see if it's the same one. So, yeah, anyway, Henry VIII armor. This was later when I guess he was getting pudgy. All right, so I was looking at that, laughing my head off. And then I find, like, this one. So there's this armor called Tonlet. So it looks like a girl's skirt. Have you guys ever seen the Tonlet armor? So apparently Henry VIII liked this armor too. <laughs> and it's like, it does not look that easy to move around in. But um, okay, I don't know what to say. Let's see. So I did a little bit more research on it. Oops, why did you do that? So that one that I saw before, <laughs> oh, and I forgot about this one. <laughs> Odd piece was a weird Renaissance fashion trend. That's even more ridiculous. I mean, there's these people can't actually be like going into war with these because those are totally not a good way to <laughs> protect yourself. <laughs> All right, let's see. Dang, there's a whole bunch of these articles. I was looking for an article with this title, but there's like 10 of them apparently. So I'll just have to click on the first one and see if it was useful. Okay, so now apparently this, it wasn't just that one photo or that one uh, portrait of Henry VIII. It was a thing. So like, check it out. <laughs> have you ever seen uh, this? 
Renaissance fashion trend. This is the one I spotted before where I'm like, there's this wasn't there. And this is mild compared to the other ones. Apparently, he was just uh, being more surreptitious than the rest of them. I mean, look at that one. Come on, people. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that just wasn't a thing. No, I, I've looked through the Renaissance stuff. We studied it in school. I've looked. I, I've looked at armor, and and no, it's not. It's not right. Okay. I think there was a little bit more silly Tonlet stuff too, or Tonlet. Is it French? I'm not sure. So it kind of reminds me of what's that uh, cartoon with Bender on it? It reminds me like a fembot or something from the cartoon. Uh, like, look at this one. <laughs> I mean, is that cut out so he could get on the horse? I don't know, but I mean, come on, people. <laughs> Tonlet. Check this stuff out. There's no way. Henry VIII's Tonlet armor. <laughs> Come on, that's just so, it's like cartoons. They're coming to life now. You can't escape. <laughs> this one has a nice little, I mean, come on. It's like a total, um, <laughs> it's like we're getting trolled, I swear. Um, yeah, anyways. That bulge was not in any painting before. Yep. And I spotted that change, what, I think it was only like a month ago or something on the Henry VIII portraits. But it didn't occur to me that they had spread everywhere, but it makes sense that they did. So apparently the timeline really likes its cod pieces because we're seeing those... Even in Star Wars, you can't escape the cod pieces. Never seen skirted armor, cross dress. Yeah, I don't know. Are we going to get more like maybe female warriors? But they're not saying it's for female warriors. Like these, uh, these characters, like that was Henry VIII, Henry VIII's Tonlet armor. So it was, uh, and it was made all like pudgy style for him. <laughs> <laughs> That's surely from Monte Python. <laughs> you know, you would think that they would have been on every goofy skit ever. Like, oh, well, this was Renaissance fashion, right? I mean, why didn't all, yeah, that's a good question. Why didn't all those British comedies have Tonlet armor and and giant cod pieces and stuff. I mean, they totally missed out. <laughs> I mean, check that out. Come on, people. The lips, too. What has it got? A, what the heck? It's got like a, a frowny face, a mustache, and looks like some kind of... No, what is that? It's like a fish face or something. What's up with the feet? Look at those feet. What is that? Oh, come on. What is this even? Is this even real? Restoration armor. Okay, re so it's real? I mean, it was really like that with the feet? What is that? That's like the fish man or something. Who has feet like that? What the heck? Miguel Karen, let me just see what this is. 
Early decorative tonlet armor for a boy after restoration. So this is original armor for a boy. What's wrong with that boy's foot? What is the deal with that? That's insanity. Let's see if there's any more on this restoration. All right, the rest of these look a little more normal. Still, that's craziness. What would be the point of having a foot that wide? I don't, that, are they gonna use it to like kick people? Your foot is a club? This is just weird. <laughs> and there's booty armor, look. <laughs> I'm afraid to ask what's going to come next. There's another one. Oh, Pinterest, so I can't really chase that down well. I kind of want to see what that one does. That was weird. Now, I think I've had this one on. This was a gift to Henry VIII by somebody. I mean, really, if you got that, that's supposed to be... Uh, armor headpiece gift to Henry VIII. I mean, if somebody gave you that, what would you think of them? It's pretty bizarre. All right, so I think I have that one covered. All right, so next one. Um, apparently we have a fish with a sucker on its belly now. So yeah, all that. So the, um, the goofy um, man parts armor was Shari D. So good find, Shari. All right, so we have, and there's a bunch of these. Have you ever seen a fish with, this, with like a clam bond sucker on, it, on its belly? These are so common that there are even stuffed animals of these. I have never seen these. The, the lump sucker fish. Okay, so um, not only did they kind of waddle along, but right on their stomach, there's like the sucker thing. Let me see if I can find one. So they can like suck. On so here is the the stomach area. So the head is up here and this is the belly and it has that. So they can like suck onto like the glass or a rock. Pacific spiny lump. There's a bunch of these too. Have you ever heard of that? So last time I was looking, there was a bunch of, um, there was a bunch of stuffed animals and all this weird business. So I don't know, have you guys seen these things? That shows it a little better. You can see, see the eyes and stuff. So there's the eyes, there's the belly. See if they have anything exciting to say about these. A group of small spherical fish that live in the chilly waters of the Arctic. They've got all these different colors, of course. They look like squatty balls. They're from the Cy Cyclopteri die family. Cyclopteri die. Are we gonna get like Cyclops lumpfish then? From the Greek words kyklos, how do, cyclo, cyclop from kyklos, meaning round or circle. I wonder, though, I, I don't know, is it just random that it just happens to say cyclops on it? First, they have a suction-like cup on their underside, which allows them to attach to rocks and other surfaces. 
The disc is actually a modified pectoral fin and keeps the fish from being swept away by ocean currents. Lump suckers are not very good swimmers. Lump suckers suction discs also play a role in reproduction. The males, after laying eggs, the males attach to a nearby rock and stand guard over the eggs for up to eight weeks. He then uses his fins to fan oxygen-rich water over the eggs and defend the nest against potential predators. Lump suckers don't have scales. Instead, they have lumpy protrusions all over their bodies called tubercles. Tubercles are made of keratin. The same substance that makes up your hairs and fingernails. These lumps protect, serve as protection from predators. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, that's about it. But yeah, I don't know. Have you heard of those things? I probably could have put one of those as the thumbnail, but it didn't happen. I mean, they're cute. I'll give them that. I wonder if they're going to turn it into some kind of cyclops, though. Lump sucker, a name only a 12-year-old boy could love. Yes, I think that a 12-year-old boy might have invented these things, too. Like the frogs that can... Breathe through the nether regions. Yep. <laughs> Bit of venom. I'm not touching that one. So it's not the belly is outside. They just have like a sucker on their belly. Their belly is still in there, I guess. So as far as I know, they don't eat through it. They still have a mouth. I mean, that may change, but I haven't seen anything yet. Okay, so yeah, uh, okay. I don't know, have I covered this one before? Gutenberg, how many of you guys learned that Gutenberg invented movable type during the Industrial Revolution? All that yammer, uh, so surprise, he did not invent it anymore. Of course not. Now he only popularized it. I mean, what is the, even the point of having his name if he didn't invent it? Ooh, he popularized it. Probably like everything we ever learned in school was all 100% wrong. Nobody could write a history book to save their life. The weird thing is that when I got to high school, I had some, uh, like, historians that were actual, like, that was their love of their life. They weren't just teachers. They spent every waking hour, and they weren't teaching, uh, studying history. During uh, summer break, they would actually go out to historical sites and research there and go through libraries and stuff. And none of them ever disputed this stuff in high school that we learned, you know, Gutenberg and all this stuff. They had additional context to add and a lot of interesting stories to fill in the cracks. But none of them went and said, all that stuff you learned was wrong. And these were, you know, absolute diehard. They just weren't teachers who slammed their le lesson plans together and were stupid. Okay, so... So Gutenberg didn't actually invent printing, printing as we know it on the unsung Chinese and Christian uh, Korean history of movable type. So basically, if you go through this whole yammer, uh, they're saying that um, Bi Shang of China invented it in 1050. 
so way earlier. So they just went ahead and, and pushed it way earlier. It was invented by Bi Shang. And pretty universally, uh, every place now says that too. I'm going to risk it by typing it in, but... All right, see, like, this one has it. The first known movable type system for printing was made of ceramic materials and created in China around 1040 by Bi Sheng. Here, movable type was first created by Bi Sheng, who used baked clay. So maybe they're just going to say Gutenberg used metal. So, see, I'm just typing in who invented movable type. So apparently... Everybody knows now. Just kind of suspicious. So, yeah, um, well, he didn't invent the printing test press if he didn't invent movable type. So, all right. So, what do we, what does Gutenberg get credit for? Gutenberg invented. Let's see what the wiki has to say about him. Introduced printing to Europe with his mechanical movable type printing press. His work started printing revolution in Europe and is regarded as a milestone of the second millennium. While not the first to use movable type in the world, in 1439 Gutenberg was the first European to do so. His many contributions to printing include the invention of a process for mass producing movable type, the use of oil based ink for printing books, adjustable molds, and blah, blah, blah. So, so, yeah, now he's only the first European to use movable type. Not really that big a deal then. It should be B. Shang who gets all the credit then in this timeline. Yeah, so agreed, bit of venom, tap before the time. So, boy, they pushed it back hundreds of years this time. <laughs> the logical danger is cracking open a beer. <laughs> yeah, it might be bad if I did that. About native products. Pineapples are depicted in murals in Pompeii. Pineapples are said to originate in South America. Hmm. I don't know. Nothing really makes sense in the current timeline. And I think we're going to hear some whole new weird history, Tartaria style kind of thing down the road. Like for me, the Vikings weren't, there was no evidence of the Vikings in the New World. Um, now they had a whole village in uh, the south end of Canada. So there wouldn't be anything weird about them being here in America. So there was uh, towards, what is it, the 80s maybe, they, they were some rumor of a couple stones with some suspicious writing that could be Viking. And that was it. But I mean, now we have this whole village and everything. So yeah, they were here. Um, but yeah. Um, so what, what history are we going to get to replace the old history? So if we get a tech before it's time, and more interesting tech, you know, uh, if I'm just, you know, the reason I like the Tartaria thing is because the Tartaria thing, the concept, and so many people are believing on it that, you know, if thoughts and belief make reality, then the concept behind Tartaria is that uh, a, a race that came before us of some creatures, we don't know if they're our own people, uh, just with more tech, or if they were giants, or what, we don't know. I mean, that's, it's not agreed on, but that they had a kind of tech where they could get free energy from the atmosphere and use it to power their houses. So you can see the allure there, and if we have like a whole bunch of people believing on it really hard, um, you know, maybe we can get that. 
So that would be really cool, wouldn't it? So that's why I'm, one of the reasons I'm really into Tartaria is I like it. I like what it could do for us. I think Tartaria could work in like a time, into a timeline that could give us a lot of like good free stuff and easier living and stuff. So, and um, so, you know, pick the good timelines, people. Okay, this one was kind of a special one for me. Because you know I like this weird stuff. But it's not spiders. So. <laughs> it's probably worse. But oh well. <laughs> but there's no images. So. You don't have to look at, I don't think there's any images, actually. There might be. All right, so well, this is like a malignant transformation of Hymenolepis, Nana, and human host. So what's all this yammer? Okay, so basically they're saying that somebody got a tapeworm. And they're saying that these tapeworms are common in humans. And then they can just kind of live in there and keep living and live their whole lifestyle in there. And you could have them and never know. So, yeah, it's all creepy. But here's what's weird. So this guy gets cancer, and they go in there, and they take a sample of it. And the cancer is a, it has DNA from this tapeworm. So what they're saying is the tapeworm got cancer and then, like, gave it to the man. So now humans can get cancer by exposure to cancer um, from somebody else's cancer. So now I talked before about those Tasmanian devils they, that were, uh, they were, the, the story, and it was kind of an older story, but it was very suspicious when I first heard of it, was that they have a cancer that's communicable. They spread it through the different Tasmanian devils, and they were, oh, they're in, endangered because of this cancer so that was already weird enough that there was a communicable one but it was between Tasmanian devils so this cancer was communicable and it was between a worm and a human so this guy had to have surgery for cancer his cancer was from this worm uh, Nana the dwarf tapeworm the most common human tapeworm up to 75 million persons are estimated to be carriers and the prevalence among children is as high as 25% in some areas. T infections are typically asymptomatic. Woo, so you'll never even know you had it. Can complete its lifestyle in the small intestine without the need for an intermediate host. Such auto infection can persist for years and lead to a high parasite burden, particularly in immunocompromised hosts. I kind of wonder, I mean, I. How does your immune system combat tapeworms if they're like in the food region? I mean, you don't really have antibodies in there. You just shoot that all through. Infections are generally limited to the gastrointestinal tract where eggs release in the small bowel, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so the point is that he got cancer from a tapeworm. Um, at the end, they said, let's see. They said something about, um, they said something at the end about this has importance. Oh, here, the host parasite interaction that we report should stimulate deeper exploration of the relationships between infection and cancer. So I'm kind of wondering if they aren't going to go, like if the timeline isn't going to go with this more, uh, the cure for cancer. What if um, the timeline goes with infection as the cause of cancer, or maybe infection by something that we don't currently understand? Because they used to say that um, ulcers were caused by, like, stress. And then later, they, oh, no, we were wrong the whole time, and it's caused by infection. 
And so they give you like antibiotics to kill it. So I'm wondering if we might get that with the cancer now, um, just because the way that it's kind of been moving. I, I don't know, but there's something very fishy going on with how cancer is now. I would be dying of curiosity to learn about the mechanisms behind communicable cancer. Yeah, well, study that Tasmanian devil business. I don't re recall getting any good answers myself. Because I thought it was your... So here's the thing, you know, in my old timeline, if cells got into you that didn't have your DNA, then your body would immediately go, antibody attack! You know, so in this timeline, though, you can have, like, cells from your mother and even from your uh, older brother and si sisters, uh, they all can just survive in there. Like your body just puts up with them. You can, uh, you can adapt cells from like blood donors um, that they can survive, uh, they can attach, they're not immediately destroyed. Uh, DNA, you know, the DNA, it's, so one of the reasons the blood could be transferred is because it didn't have all the DNA, but apparently now it just, you know, somehow gets along. And that's why we have these chimera people because they're like two siblings glued together in the womb and somehow they, they tolerate each other. Now, that was kind of a thing, well, maybe somehow the immune system was still being formed and so it formed with this in place already. But now with this tapeworm thing, it's like, no, 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 no. Why did the body feed those foreign DNAs? Why didn't it just go, ah, kill, kill, kill? Okay, so next one, this one is from John Austin, Tesla logo. Is looking kind of funny. I'll just go straight to the Logopedia. So it's never changed. Let's see if I can make it a little bigger though. All right, so the top part is okay, but this part, come on. Oh, this is not working. All right, let me just try it a different way. Oops. Okay, so 2003 to present, it hasn't changed. Let me get a bigger one up. This one should be pretty big. Okay, so what do you notice about the Tesla logo? Does it even look weird to you? Dun, dun, dun. I'm going to let you uh, chew on that one. And then I'm going to go to the next one. So again, that's the logo. Technically, it's always been the logo. All right, this next one is from Joey Sinkovic. I got more see-through beasts. This time it's going to be an octopus. Glass octopus. So you can kind of see the eyes in there. So remember we had that one goofy see-through, that barrel fish that had a see-through front? Um, and then you, the eyes were buried inside and it could just see out through its see-through head. Now, I thought that was really freaky when it first came out. But now these see-through things are like a dime a dozen and we've got this glass octopus and it's got the same setup where the eyes are like just kind of, you can just kind of see them in there and the rest is all see-through. So, yeah, pretty weird. No, I don't remember there being a see-through octopus before. So 
don't think that one's going to be very big. Nope. This one's better. So, yeah, you, these, I think, are the eyes, maybe? I'm not sure, actually. I should probably look that thing up. See what the wiki has to say. Is a transparent gelatinous, almost colorless meso to bathy pelagic octopod. Octopod. What's the difference between an octopod and an octopus? Octo versus octopus. I've never actually heard of an octopod. As now as the difference between octopus and octopod is that octopus is any of several marine mollusk, mollusks of the family having no internal or external protective shell. Well, octopod is any animal with eight feet or foot-like parts. I don't think I really get it, but whatever. I cry uncle. Well, there's like almost no info on this. I bet this will get larger. Yeah, there's like nothing. Okay. Might be kind of a fresh off the presses creature. All right, see where you guys are. Octopod mom. <laughs> yep. It's not an E, all these broken letters. Someone's asked about the triangle. <laughs> DNA is the least of my worries. <laughs> okay, so change a Tesla. Oops, there. All right, so I agree. I don't remember the A looking like this. I think it was more A-like. Um, and that was what uh, Joey Sinkovic thought. I also don't think I remember the E being like that, but I'm not as sure. The A definitely looks weird. Uh, the E, you know, I'm, I'm not as sure on that one. But yeah, that's a pretty weird looking A. All right, so there's that one. All right, this one's another one from John Austin. Do uh, you guys remember ninjutsu? Or do you remember ninjutsu? Ninjutsu or ninjutsu? So I'll let you guys chew on that one. And I'm going to cover one more weird creature. And then, I, it's, uh, then I'm going to be done unless you guys have anything to bring up. Okay, so this one was caught by... Uh, oh, John Austin again. Um, he mentioned the... So a lot of them by John Austin this time. Good finds. Cheetah cubs. Now, I've been looking at these guys for a while. And I noticed their hair was getting longer and longer. And I might have mentioned this, I am not sure, but their hair was like tawny colored before. It was not this. I don't know what's going on now, but they look freaking weird, cheetah cubs. And like I said, I've been watching these, so this is not something I didn't know about. What's up with that? Like they've gotten the, the single stripe on the back that the skunks have lost. 
I mean, that's just, so they were getting long hair, but it was like tawny colored. It wasn't white like this. Their faces have gotten more puffy with fur too. Um, it was like, it was more like a normal face with some straggles and now it's like a ping pong head. But this is the real striking part here. There's no way that they had all this happening over here. That is, and not white, it was not white. So this one kind of kicked me in the head right when he said, I mean, look at this guy. That's crazy. Look at that back fur. So John Austin was saying it looked like a honey badger because of the way the fur is. That's, that's just not, look, even this, this tail has like a mohawk on it. It's just like, no. That is not right. I mean, look at how puffy that guy is. It seems like that's one of the ways these animals change is that they'll put it into the, the, the babies. It kind of looks like uh, right here is getting a little more boy. Look at that. It almost looks like it's been edited there. Um, Maybe that's the, oh, is it a logo? No, a piece of grass. It's a piece of grass. Okay. It looks like it's getting, this little hook here might be getting a little more extensive on these too. But yeah, so they have all this white uh, guard hairs now that they just didn't have before. And it wasn't that long ago when I looked at it. Look at mini mohawk. Well, it's cute, but that is just not right. Here's another bunch of them. Come on, you would would you ever forget if you saw that? They all have like white mohawks on their head. It's crazy. Mohawk cheetah. So yeah, they, they roll in these changes with the babies. And you go, oh, well, maybe I didn't remember how the babies looked. Uh, but then slowly the changes like percolate into the adults. So the adults are getting longer fur also, but not as fast. Jujutsu. So ninjutsu or ninjutsu. So Jujutsu, it's, <laughs> you guys are all watching a bunch of manga and anime because it's, <laughs> it's just the martial art, the real one, not this, the stuff that, um, it's not the stuff like on TV, ninjutsu or Jujutsu, Ju, it's hard for me to say it, um, ninjutsu or ninjutsu. One mullet to rule them all. Yep. For me, the E was not connected, but it was more of a pyramid-like. Yeah, I don't know. There's just something about the E that ain't right. All right. Bill Knight remembers ninjutsu. Monty Hendricks remembers ninjutsu. Capalicious 420 remembers ninjutsu, Broadnecks Caster, ninjutsu. See, I, yeah, I remember ninjutsu, and then when, like, those um, animes came out, they would call it the jutsus when they would do the funny hand signals, right? And, they, oh, that, I, I don't know what, where that came from, but that was the first time I ever heard of jutsu, um, was anime or manga. And ninjutsu was the actual real-life um, martial art. For me, ninjutsu, again, crunchy bee. There's types A, B, and Z DNA. I've not heard of that. A, B, Z, DNA. 
B form A form Z form D and A. The heck? Right, they're just talking about the helical formation. Okay, so it looks like these are variations in how the DNA coils around itself. Three different forms of duplex, duplex nucleic acid have been described. The most common form at neutral pH and physiological salt concentrations is B form. That is the classic right-handed double helical structure we have been discussing. A thicker right-handed duplex with a shorter distance between the base pairs has been described for an RNA DNA, DNA duplexes and RNA RNA duplexes. This is called A form nucleic acid. A third form of duplex DNA has strikingly different left handed helical structures. The Z DNA is formed by stretches of alternate purines and pyrimidines, like GC, 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 especially a negatively coiled, negatively supercoiled DNA. A small amount of the DNA cells exists in Z form. It has been tantalizing to propose that this different structure is involved in some way in regulation of some cellular function, such as transcription or regulation. Okay, yeah, I've never heard of that. I don't know. Is it, if it's new, it would make sense that I hadn't heard of it? See, like this is from 2021, so I, I don't know. I mean, if it's just brand new, maybe I wouldn't have heard of it. Okay, so I have trouble saying ninjutsu because to me it's not right. For me, it's ninjutsu. Um, but when I start looking it up, ninjutsu, typing it in as I recall, I have never hit, heard of ninjutsu. So I type in ninjutsu. And all I get is ninjutsu. Ninjutsu, sometimes used interchangeably with the modern ter term ninpo, is the strategy and tactics of unconventional warfare, guerrilla warfare, and espionage purportedly practiced by the ninja. So it was ninjutsu for me, though. Um, I've never heard of ninjutsu. Ninjutsu or Ninpo. But weirdly, look, there's ninjutsu.com, Ninjutsu Black Belt Course. So they're teaching a black belt course, but they don't know how to spell it or pronounce it properly. Seems kind of weird. So Wiki and all of these informational ones call it Ninjutsu. But then the academies are still ninjutsu. Maybe these are real humans and they didn't know that it changed. Ninjutsu philosophy, history, and training techniques. So anyway, yeah, like two-thirds of it now is ninjutsu. Where can I learn ninjutsu of the real ninja? And I've never seen that word before. Now, granted, I don't look all the time, but I mean, really, I've never heard of it. I've heard of ninjutsu and I've heard of jutsu. And the only reason I know of jutsu is because of like anime. I've heard of jujitsu. Jujitsu is a specific martial art, but not uh, ninjutsu. Jujitsu or ninjutsu, yes. Ninjutsu, no. Okay, I'm going to go crazy if I have to say it again. Ninjutsu for nincompoop. Yeah, it's. 
Ninjutsu was the art of the art of the poor farmers, hence weapon mimicking farm tools. Yeah, except for there is no ninjutsu anymore. Apparently it's ninjutsu. So ninjutsu is different from jujitsu. Jujitsu is a specific um martial art that is not ninja style. It's just like upfront fighting style. There's different ones, obviously, of upfront, up front, but it's not the one where you sneak around and assassinate people. It's a different one. So there was jujitsu and you know karate, and there was ninjutsu, but now it's ninjutsu. So basically, ninjutsu was like the long form of ninja. <laughs> yeah, I, know, I have trouble saying it. <laughs> it's like because it's it's like it's like two other words mashed together for me. It's not the right word. Those are mudras with fancy markings like spelling. Yeah, that was kind of like how um, jutsu was for me. Is jujitsu now jujutsu? Are you kidding me? Wait, let me look that up. Jujitsu. Let's see. <laughs> no, that's not right. It can't be. There's no way. Jujitsu. Ju no, it's still jujitsu. Jujitsu, right? <gasps> no, it's jujutsu. Oh my god. No way. Ultimate jujitsu.com, but it says there. It's jujutsu. Oh my god. No, that's wrong too. That's wrong. <laughs> jujutsu. <laughs> Freaking manga is taking over the world. Look, there's still jujitsu.com. Brazilian. All right, so there's still Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Maybe the takeover hasn't been. I've never heard of Jiu Jitsu, though. That is just wrong. Jiu Jitsu Kaizen. So maybe they're two different things? All right, let's do jujitsu versus jujute. Jujitsu versus ju. How do you spell it again? Jujutsu. My brain is having a trouble with that one. Jujutsu versus jujitsu. What is the difference between jujitsu and jujutsu and jujitsu? In Sweden, we we'll only have jujutsu, and I have noticed that in the USA, they have both jujutsu and jujitsu. Let me get rid of this cookies thing. Which one is no on these cookies? All right, I think that's no. They are the same thing. It's only a matter of romanization. Spelling Japanese words using Roman letters. Huh. So maybe in some times it was jujitsu and some it was jujutsu. I come from the jujitsu timeline. That's all I... And, and the ninjutsu. It sounds like, like everything was itsu for my timeline.
Historically speaking, some systems have written jujitsu. However, if I had to say that a specific one is the best, I'd go with jujutsu, as it seems to be the closest English analog one could get. Practitioners of Japanese will favor jujutsu or jujitsu spelling, depending on their lineage. On the other hand, practitioners of Brazilian jujutsu will generally favor jujitsu spelling. All right, I don't know the Brazilian one, so even though they're saying, I didn't actually know there was a Brazilian one. I don't know. That's just weird. I, I think it's just another example of the two timelines coming together, and they'll just go, oh, there's two options now for that word. We see that with a lot of stuff. There'd be like, you come from a timeline where there's one version, and then suddenly they're like, oh, you can have these three different versions are perfectly fine. I played Fruit Ninja. It was never Jujutsu, trust me. <laughs> I don't know. See, it was Jujutsu and then Jutsu. That was it. I, I refused to accept any other versions. Jujutsu is brand new for me, but typing it into the phone, it corrected me to say Jujutsu. I don't know. Maybe your phone is slow to the party. It has never been Jujutsu. I know. I know. I know. I'm saying, oh, that's the preferred one. <laughs> What is the ninja official color? Are you telling me it's not black? Jujutsu Kaisen is an anime about demon killing. I don't know that one, so. There's no way it was Jujutsu. Yay! I'm glad. I'm glad you guys remember it because sometimes they come with one and I'm like, no, I'm sure it was this way. And you guys are all, oh, no, it was never that way. So I'm glad a lot of you see this one. <laughs> Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I know, I know. I didn't know about any Brazilian jiu-jitsu. All right. So, yeah, I, you know, that's the thing. I can't say um, I ever remember an official color of ninja. But so, yeah, maybe I was wrong. I don't know. But now I have to know what it is. What is it like purple or something? <laughs> oh, maybe it's white. All right. Um, how do you find it? Nin Okay, I don't even know, because you just tell me what it is. <laughs> Official ninja color. I, I'm not finding it, so whatever. I don't know. You guys tell me what is the official ninja color now, because I don't know. It looks more like dark blue than black. Hmm. Okay. 
I mean, I know there's belt colors, but I, I assume that there's like one official color for the rest of the clothing, maybe? Now, I always remember them wearing black. So if you're telling me it's dark blue, I'm suspicious. My partner doesn't remember the cornucopia in the Fruit of the Loom logo. Yeah, that's creepy. Almost everybody remembers the cornucopia. So he's like really a current timeline. All right, so it's dark blue. Dark blue is the official color of the ninja. So what are they wearing, like dark blue uniforms now? Not black? Now you've already seen like Darth Vader get silver stuff and sparkly stuff. The stormtroopers aren't all white anymore. They've got some colors in some of their stuff. Um, so I don't know, the timeline likes its color, I guess. Dark blue. I don't think I've ever seen a ninja in dark blue. Ninja. Dark blue. Did ninjas wear black or dark blue? I mean, it makes sense to wear black so you blend in. <laughs> a ninja is a samurai, usually from lower nobility, who specializes in ninjutsu. He may be a spy, blah, blah, blah. As George Sawyer correctly states, the ninja didn't really have a specific color. They wore whatever fit the mission. So the black on nights with no moon and white on nights with moon. So it seems that ninjas would wear white. I don't know. They didn't wear black. That was purely a move of convenience in cinema. Okay, I don't know. I give up. I can't really find anything on it. Everybody was kung fu gaslighting. <laughs> yep. That's this timeline. <laughs> I've seen white, red, and black, but mostly black. I don't know. Maybe the timeline hasn't decided yet. Dark blue is the official color of my mood. Well, it could be worse. Okay, Ninja Encyclopedia. Let's check it out. There could be like 500 timelines on this one. That's why nobody could agree. The most famous type of ninja outfit. Black cloth completely over their body. Black hood, blah, blah, blah. But what type of costume did a ninja act wear usually? The orthodox uniform of a ninja. You know, I think this has to do with the night sky here. So in my old timeline, it was freaking dark out. Um, and you couldn't see nearly so easily as now. The sky was black, except for the stars. And um, even when the moon was out, the sky was still black. It would shed more light down here, but the sky was still black. Black, black, black. So it made sense for ninjas to have black clothes. But here, with the kind of 
dark blue, a lot of times night sky, it actually makes sense for ninjas to wear blue. It's lighter here. This was because a black costume would have stood out in the dim light. Not in my old timeline, but here, yes. The basic color of a ninja's uniform was a dark blue or yellowish red. Also, these colors were also the same colors as farmers' uniforms. If a ninja were to carry out his work during the daytime, it would have been ideal not to stand out as different. Uh, they had a chain hemp garment. I have not heard of that. The chain hemp garment. The heck, the chain hemp garment was used only when there was a battle and hand-to-hand -hand combat was eminent because it was very heavy in weight. They weighed, so what, they had some kind of chain mail thing? A chain hemp garment. What the heck is a chain hemp garment? Hemp garment. Mm -hmm. See, why am I seeing underwear here? Ninja. Well, let's just add ninja into there. Narrow it down a bit, maybe. All right, it's still the same thing. Ninja armor. Ninja, in some cases, wore this chain-linked hemp garment under the ninja clothing. Clothing. Shinobi Kachu. It was Shinobi Kachu. Okay, I've never heard of that. Ninja Armor. I'm trying to see if there's actually Chain Link under there, or is it some kind of hemp, or what? Chain linked hemp garment under their ninja clothing during war when spying. There's not much info on it. You would think that they would say what it was. See, that looks more than like just um, hemp. There's some kind of non hemp material in there. I don't know what that is, though. Pieces of wood, pieces of... I don't know what those are. So they had some kind of armor, basically. Hmm. Okay, so I don't know. I give up. It, You know, it does make sense, though, for them to have blue here, so I guess I shouldn't be... Too shocked it's changed. It's one thing that actually kind of makes like Mandela sense. Yeah, Lindsay, I don't know. You know, if they don't want to talk about the Mandela, you can't do much. If they start to get sick of it, I would definitely back off. Because um, they'll just, there's a point where if you nag on them, you know, to them, it'll be like nagging if you keep bringing it up and they don't want to talk about it. They'll just push harder against it. So sometimes, you know, if you back off, sometimes they'll come around. Chainmail wouldn't defeat the purpose of being sneaky. I don't know, but guess they had some kind of quiet ones. I've never heard of it, though. Yeah, does it have a skirt? <laughs> Shinobi Katsu. Let's see what other images we've got here. <laughs> it looks very African. Uh, what's this? It is a little skirt-like, maybe. With an overall look. <laughs> yeah, check it out. They have a bit of a skirt going on. <laughs> look, look, look. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a, a bit much. I don't know. 
not much uh, images on DuckDuckGo. I don't know. Everything's changing. I do think I remember them kind of having like a a low skirt like the ninjos they because it was like a tunic basically it didn't flare out and these ones don't so i can't say it's different for me Lindsay's taken off. Yeah, I'm almost done, so you're not going to really miss anything. I'm just kind of looking through, but I'll probably be signing off here in a minute. Broadnets and Lindsay, my husband started talking about it after I had some, after he had some crazy experiences. Yeah, sometimes um, that'll work if you back off and give them some space, and then something weird happens. Well, they know who they can talk to about it without you saying they're crazy, right? So. Then once they see some weird stuff, then it's a little easier to be more open-minded about it. I do think we're all going to just see more and more weird stuff, though. It, it, I don't think it's going to stop. Ninjas know what's good. I feel like that's going to be some idiocracy saying, you know, or, you know, that old movie, that silly movie. Ninjas know what's good. Okay, anyways, well, I'm pretty much done, so thanks, everybody. Yeah, proselytizing does not work. You know, if people get upset with you, then they'll start thinking of that subject, and they will pair it with their upsetness, and they'll just get, like, more upset next time. So if you push too hard, they're just not ready to deal with it, you know. So you just got to give them more space and hope that they'll come around. It's not 100%, but... But, you know, you can actually make it worse if you make them dig in because they just feel like they have to defend themselves. Look at God instructing Moses on making Aaron's bonnet and girdle in the Bible, and you'll see that things have taken a dark turn. All right, I'll check it out. Real quick, real quick, and then I'm bailing. I don't really like to end it on such a negative sounding note, but. Um, I don't know. I'm not really finding it that easy, so. That's the skeptic's Bible, so I don't want to look at that. So I'm going to take your word for it. Probably don't want to look at something that miserable at the end anyways. So I'm taking off. Um, think good thoughts, everybody. This is Eva signing off for Once Upon a Timeline.